chapter 10, and we're going to start uh, with verse 21 this week. We got to verse 20 last week, and uh, continue this study. If you have your, if some of you may be using your uh, Sunday school books, maybe, but uh, we're on darkness. This is, a, this is a plague of darkness we're going to be reading about. Verse 21, <coughs> chapter 10 of Exodus. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over all the land of Egypt, which may be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They saw no one another, neither rose any from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. And Pharaoh called unto Moses and said, Go ye, serve the Lord only. Let your flocks and your herds be stayed. Let your little ones also go with you. And Moses said, Thou must give us also sacrifices and burnt offerings that we may sacrifice unto the Lord our God. Our cattle also shall go with us. There shall not be a hoof be left behind, for there must be we take to serve their uh, for the Lord thereof, and must we take to serve the Lord our God. And we know not with what we must serve the Lord until we come to them. And the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not let them go. And Pharaoh said unto him, Get thee from me, take heed to thyself, see thy face no more, for in that day thou seest my face, thou shalt die. And Moses said, Thou hast spoken well, and I will see thy face again no more. An interesting thing, it's said here that uh, when Moses stretched forth his hand, God told Moses to stretch forth his hand. You'll notice in this particular play that uh, Pharaoh wasn't warned like there are other times. He, he had a warning. So this, this darkness came. And uh, Dale, could you go ahead and put the first slide on there about darkness? Uh, it said darkness which can be felt. That's an, oh, Darkness which can be felt. Now, I have something interesting that I found out, and I, uh, I've got some pictures to show you, I hope. Most scholars agree that darkness probably was caused by the Hamsin, okay? Now, that's one thing about it. If you go to the, if you go to the, uh, the, uh, the Greek there, this darkness is hoshek, which means misery, destruction, ignorance, sorrow, wickedness, darkness, and obscurity. Darkness which may be felt. The word there is mash ash. M-A-S-H-A-S-H. -S -H. And it means to feel or to grope or to search. Now, this Hassim that I was talking about is a fierce sandstorm so dreaded in the east. The hot dry wind was like a blast of furnace. It fills the air with sand and dust, so the sun is blotted out. The heat, the dust, and the static electricity make conditions almost unbearable. Add to this is the effect on the mind and spirit of the thick, oppressive darkness. This play concluded the manifestation of God's wonders and was a forbidding prelude to an act of judgment. Okay, here's, here's darkness which can be felt. Now we, some of you, may have seen sandstorms before. Right. But this is a sandstorm in the Middle East, okay? And you can see this is sand. And it also causes static electricity in the air. Okay? Oh, wow. So you can get electrocuted by, by walking through the sandstorm. It's that bad. Yes? You know, I was listening to uh, Ian McCormick this week. I don't know if anybody knows that, but he was, uh, he was, uh, you know, he was out swimming. He's Australian. He was out swimming. And he got stung by five box jellyfish. Yeah. You know the story? Anyway, so more one box jellyfish will kill you immediately. And apparently he got out, and at the time he was dying. 
and the fisherman saw him and he was pale and he didn't take him to the hospital. He was trying to get a taxi. The taxi man wouldn't get him and take him to the hospital. But he ended up going and he ended up dying. And it's funny because before he died, you know, he saw his mother praying for him on the other side of, in Australia. And he saw his mother in a vision praying for him. So she said, pray, pray, because the Lord had woke her up. It was late at night, woke her up to pray for her son. Well, needless to say, the man died. And when he died, he said that he had prayed before he died and he had received Christ. He said that there was a darkness that was surrounding him. He goes, he could feel it. I mean, it was, you know, and this is when he had already passed. You know, he has come back and now he's here to live for the Lord and give his testimony. But he said he could feel that darkness, that oppression. And he, it, was, it was like thick. So when you say that, to me, I'm thinking spiritual because it's like the oppression of, of hell. Yes. These people, though, they, 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 they stayed in, they, had to, they, had, they couldn't even go outside for three days. Yeah. And, you know, it, they couldn't even open their eyes outside. So they couldn't see one another according to the scripture. You know, so this darkness could be felt. Yeah. And I know uh, I know uh, spiritually we can feel darkness. Yes, we can. Yeah. But I really believe that this was a physical thing. Okay? What's the next slide, Dale? Okay, there we go. Great. Ra. Ra. Ra, the, the god of sun and radiance. Now, this is one of the things I wanted to point out was that uh, they were fighting... A sun god. Okay? Mm -hmm. This was their major gods. Ra was their major... Uh, uh, they had. They also had uh, several... Uh, Atum was the sun god. Horus was the god of the sky and sun. Now let me read something to you real quick here. It says the Neolithic concept of a solar bark... That's the next The next slide, I believe. Go to the next one. No, that's Horus. Okay, there's a solar bark. Okay, a sky boat... Uh, Solar bark or the sky, and the sun boat, a mythological representation of the sun riding in a boat, is found in the latter myths of ancient Egypt. With Ra, we we seen Ra just a minute ago, and Horus, we got a picture of him too somewhere in here. Horus, pre-dynasty, there's a tomb. Okay, pre-dynasty, Egyptian beliefs attribute a tomb as the god sun god, and Horus as the god of the sky and the sun, as the old kingdom theocracy gained power. Early beliefs were incorporated with expanding popularity of Ra and Osiris Horus mythology. A tomb became Ra a tomb, the rays of the setting sun. Osiris became the divine heir of a tomb's power on earth and passes his divine authority to his son Horus. Early Egyptian myths imply the sun is within the lioness Sekhmet at night and is reflected in her eyes or that is within the cow, Hathor, during the night, being reborn each morning with her son, the bull. Okay. Now that's Hathor. We were just reading about her. She is the goddess of the sky, love, beauty, joy, motherhood, foreign lands, mining, music, and fertility. Now, there's a problem here. The problem is that these people believed in these gods. Yes, they do. They truly believed in these gods. They, think they, they believed that, the, that they created the earth, they created the sky, and there's boats in the sky going across the heavens, pulling the sun across the sky. Uh, so, Ra. Ra is the ancient Egypt solar deity. Uh, by the 5th dynasty, which is uh, 2494 B.C., not B.C.E. <laughs> I hate that, don't you? Yes. B.C.E. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yes. Yes. That's an Ankh. That's, that's the holy Ankh. You have to have that with you in order to, to pass through the river uh, Styx through hell. That gets you through hell. <laughs> gets you through hell so you can get to paradise. You have to have the Ankh. Well, God has several the pictures that have that Yes, they, all, all the deities have that Ankh with them. Okay? And, uh, it, it's a symbol of life. Uh, a symbol, in fact, they used it in the movie uh, Logan's Run, one of my favorite movies. Uh, the the, the Ankh was used for sanctuary. It was, a, it was a symbol of sanctuary. But, of course, we don't, our, our cross looks different than that. You know what I'm saying? Yes. That's not our cross. No, it's not. Uh, so, so he was the, the ruler of the kingdom of the underworld. Ra was. Also, he created all things according to them. 
uh, he's deified, but after the death of, uh, I, I can't pronounce this king's name, it's Pharaoh, Ak, Akin, Nathan, is that right? I'm not sure. The, after, he, after he died, the cult of Ra was restored. So Ra is in, even in existence today in Egypt. Uh, the Egyptian mythology about Sekhmet, or Sakmis, also spelled S-A-K-H-M-E-T, uh, was originally the warrior goddess as well as the goddess of healing for the upper of Egypt. When kingdom of Egypt was divided, she's depicted as a lioness. And she's supposed to be the protector of the land. Now, you think about it, though, it, was, it all has to do with the sun coming up every day. All these gods have to do with the, with the, with the way the, the, you know, the heavens move, I should say, right? So, what a better thing for God to do than to blot it out. That's right. Uh -huh. Blot out their gods, right? Just blot them right out. Can't see it for three days. The only thing about it is when the three days were up, we, found, we find Pharaoh saying, okay, you can go, but your herds and your flocks must stay. But we'll let you take your kids this time. Last time he said, no, just the men. This time he says, okay, you and the kids. God had to have hardened his heart. Now, has anybody ever been to the sandstorm? Uh, you have. Can you can you tell us about a sandstorm, what it's like? Well, the sandstorm that I was in, West Texas, uh, <laughs> when you were still when I was out there, it was hot. And uh, you can see it coming. It was just like a Oh, yeah.